shocking confessions and love triangles explode. Audra vs. Ashley, Tucker's secret revealed, and Jack takes action. Plus, Amanda plays Cupid? Find out what happens next on The Young and the Restless. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day, after watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. After Tucker's confession, Audra confronts Ashley, and Chance is heartbroken by Billy's response to his pitch. The young and the restless today Tucker acknowledges that Ashley paid him a visit, but Esther steps in to help Billy and Devin. Devin and Abby attempt to explain the apologies. Esther watches Devin and Billy debate over a possible contract at Chancellor Winters. Billy doesn't like it, but Devin does. They are arguing about wasting time and energy, but Esther interrupts and says she doesn't understand why they are doing it. Instead, they could be contributing so much more to the business. Devin and Billy dispute that they are arguing. Esther informs them that she values this firm and has a keen sense of emotional cues. She observes that there is a lot of tension in the air here, as well. Although she is aware of their animosity toward one another, she begs them to pause and consider how angry their dads would be about this small quarrel. Billy replies to her as she trots outside, she's not wrong. Devin concurs. Most likely, their fathers would tell them to stop and move on. Well, what do you say? Billy asks. Shall we proceed with it now? Just as Nate and Chance enter, they settle their differences and agree on the arrangement. They came to shatter their minds, says Nate. I think both of you will be as impressed with Chance's new idea as I am. Chance approaches the stage to introduce himself and the music festival. Devin informs him that the presentation was excellent. Is he interested in pursuing it? Chance asks. Devin believes that now is the ideal moment and that they should move quickly with the plan. Billy wouldn't go so far since, while he believes there is potential, it still needs improvement. Billy informs Chance and Nate that there is still a lot of work to be done once Devin gets called away. He heads out for a gathering. Chance is unaware of the recent events. Nate believes Devin is attempting to show he's not an autonomous control freak after all, while Billy is attempting to hold on to his mentorship role. Chance was taken by surprise. Billy seemed to be able to depend on Nate more than his instructor, despite his previous stellar performance. Tucker queries Audra at the GCAC as to why she thinks he's withholding something. Why does she seek for conflict? Audra is expecting the other shoe to drop, a pump in whatever size Ashley Abbott wears, knowing that something has changed with him. Although Tucker is reluctant to talk about Ashley, Audra won't let it go. Are you affirming that you haven't spoken to Ashley Abbott in the past 24 hours? By claiming that she is more fixated on her than he ever was, Tucker sidesteps the topic. She can count on him to continue if this continues. When Tucker makes a move to get up from the table, Audra apologizes to him. She acknowledges that she's not used to feeling this insecure at the moment. Tucker assures her that nothing will alter. Audra claims that Ashley is the one she is doubting, not him. She has unquestionably altered in some way. I know exactly what's changed, Tucker laughs. She came to the realization that she was mistaken. So, you did talk to her last night, didn't you? Audra asks, leaning forward. She cautions Tucker to use caution in his response. She is capable of handling whatever it is. His dishonesty about it is what she finds intolerable. We really are alike, aren't we? Tucker wonders. He acknowledges that when he went upstairs to make calls last night, Ashley was already in his suite. She was come to apologize and share that she had had a revelation about Paris. Audra laughs this off. Tucker claims there's a connection to a fender bender. Audra quips that perhaps she ought to be struck by a car more frequently. 
Tucker doesn't seem to care that she wonders what Ashley's plans are. They are no longer together. There's no turning around. It's done. Although Audra would like to think otherwise, she witnessed last night that Ashley is determined to get him back and will stop at nothing to achieve her goal. Smiling, Tucker says, bring it on. Jack and Tracy worry about Ashley talking to Tucker at the Abbott residence. Tracy clarifies that she has dropped all charges made against him. Jack finds this complete shift of sentiment incomprehensible. The possibility that Tucker's influence is still having an impact on her bothers him more. Tracy believes they might be worrying about something far worse because she gets the strong feeling Ashley might forgive Tucker and might even give it another go. Ashley appears at that moment, smiling with knowledge. Ashley tells her brother that she overstated everything that occurred in Paris after she joins Jack and Tracy. She's got a new perspective on things now. She was scared during the dispute, Tracy reminds her. Tucker, according to Ash, had nothing to gain by making her question her sanity. Jack observes that she is considerably more relaxed. Tracy believes that she can finally move past Tucker. Jack concurs, a clear cut. No, Ashley shakes her head. If only everything were that simple. Why Ashley can't just put the story with McCall to rest is beyond Jack's comprehension. This has to be done Ashley's way. Jack fears that she's going to give Tucker another go. Ashley doesn't back down and asserts that she can make the best decision for herself. I refuse to fall into those pitfalls. Ashley gives Billy a hug as soon as he gets at the Abbott mansion. She gets her coat and heads out, confident that Jack and Tracy will fill him in. What the hell was that? Jack queries. He and Tracy tell Billy about Ashley's reversal of heart and say they're concerned about the consequences. Billy speculates that she might be attempting to flee her overly watchful siblings. Jack claims that despite their best efforts, Ashley refused to make a vow that Tucker would never again enter her life. They wish they could just trust her, but with Tucker McCall, they are unable to put their trust in anything. Billy understands their concern for Ashley, but it doesn't follow that she wants Tucker back. He believes they need to have faith in her ability to regain control on her own. Jack believes there's a lot of risk. Billy says they have to have faith in her. Her journey is this. When Ashley gets to society, Tessa welcomes her and lets her know that she's the new manager. When Abby shows there, she says her mom gets special treatment all the time. As she and Ashley settle in, Abby informs Ashley that she will be joining the Chancellor Winter's board. Ashley exclaims, what, and declares herself thrilled for her. Abby informs her mother that Aunt Tracy expressed concern for her during their talk regarding her vacation to Paris. Ashley gives a grimace. Someone asks Tessa to seat her right away at the hostess stand. The demanding customer, who turns out to be Mariah, is something Tessa tries to avoid. They chuckle and joke around, with Mariah saying that since her wife is the manager, she can now ask for ridiculous things. Is Tessa really okay, with this work, she wonders. Tessa enjoys connecting with customers and staff. Ashley tells Abby she doesn't need to worry about her at their table. For the first time in a long while, she feels more in control. When Devin arrives, Ashley shares with them the details of her journey to Paris and her realization about Tucker. Apparently everything that happened was exaggerated in my mind. Ashley disagrees with Devin, who believes that the specifics are unimportant. She severely damaged Tucker's reputation. She needs him to think again if what she did caused Devin to cut his father out of his life. There are many more reasons Devin doesn't want him in his son's life or his own. Ashley makes an argument. Although she won't give him instructions, she feels obligated to apologize to him and asks that she give Tucker another chance. Devin is grateful for her sincerity and concern. 
Ashley merely wants him to reflect on her words and give them some serious thought. Devin and Abby stare at one other as she leaves. Devin claims he had no idea that would happen. Although Abby didn't either, she believes Devin is correct in feeling that he had good reason to keep Tucker at a distance. She won't be able to forget and forgive him because he's not her father. She is unsure about her mother's sudden change of heart, but she obviously has a problem. No more stalling, Audra tells Tucker as they are in his suite, pressing him to make travel plans immediately. Calling his assistant, Tucker requests that she reserve two first-class tickets to Paris as quickly as possible. When Audra says, thank you, they kiss. He carries her to the bed for makeup sex after unbuttoning her blouse. After that, Audra gets dressed and leaves while McCall is still asleep. In the GCAC, Chance enters to meet Summer. He is unsure of how to respond when she inquires about the success of his pitch meeting. Devin and Nate, he claims, enjoyed it, but Billy, not so much. Two out of three is good, in Summer's opinion. Chance gripes that Billy did little but give him a pat on the head and say, you're better off next time. He seemed to be working with Chancellor Winters toward a certain goal. It had nothing to do with the pitch, but there was an underlying tension between him and Devin. Summer is aware of Chance's emotions. Being in the business world might lead to paranoia. She points out that when Devin and Billy had previously collaborated, things had not gone as planned. There, Billy always felt like a stranger. It can take some time to get used to his return. Chance acknowledges that Devin's interest in his pitch seemed to be Billy's main issue. He wants to avoid having to choose a side. Billy believes they should let Ashley manage her own affairs at the Abbott estate. Billy and Tracy both agree. They ought to observe to see how this develops. She appears to be more composed and in charge, which is encouraging. Later, the living room is vacant when Ashley walks into the mansion. When the doorbell rings, Audra answers and tells her that she's had her say and that it's now her chance to clarify some things. Ashley smiles. The next update for today. Jack assumes leadership, Amanda plays love doctor, and Audra becomes possessive. According to the Tuesday, February 27th teasers for Young and the Restless, Audra Charles will pressure Ashley Abbott to acknowledge that Tucker McCall is now her guy. Audra will tell her that it's not happening and advise her not to even attempt, as Ashley has been making vague references about a Tucker reunion. Ashley, who isn't scared of a little rivalry, doesn't think Audra is a worthy rival when it comes to determining who has Tucker's heart. To Ashley, Audra is only a diversion from Tucker and nothing more. Still, Audra will threaten subtly and reassure Ashley that she's better at playing dirty. As one of Audra's favorite activities, she'll advise Ashley to exercise caution when approaching her. However, Ashley will believe that Audra is the one who should be concerned. Though Audra may believe that being so self-satisfied is helping her, she runs the risk of upsetting Ashley and causing even more problems. Jack Abbott will determine that he can't watch while Ashley and Tucker reconcile in the interim. Given Jack's genuine concerns, he will track Tucker down and attempt to intimidate him by issuing an ultimatum. Tucker has demonstrated that he will always follow his own desires and that he is not afraid of the Abbots. Tucker won't listen to anyone telling him how to behave, certainly not Ashley's troublesome brother, so Jack will be wasting his breath. Additionally, Tucker may bring up Ashley's actions to Jack since he believes they have irreparably damaged their relationship. But even so, Jack will be furious and tell Tucker to never mess with Ashley again or else. On Tuesday's episode of YNR, Amanda Sinclair will meet up with Phyllis Summers at the coffee shop, and they will share updates about their respective lives since Amanda departed Genoa City. Amanda will listen and try her best to play love doctor when Phyllis shares some news about her battle for Danny Romilotti and Christine Blair's obstacles.
According to teasers for The Young and the Restless, Amanda's conversation with her GC bestie will be entertaining to watch in scenes, so check in to hear it. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.